Hello, I'm Maria, and this lecture is going to be covering the CSS property Z index. So by now, you should be pretty comfortable with positioning elements on the 2D plane on your web pages. So by manipulating the X and Y values using the position top, left, bottom, and right CSS properties. Uh, so for example, something like this, where we have a 500 pixel by 500 pixel red box. Uh, and then if we add the position relative and left 300 pixels CSS property, we can see that the box moves 300 pixels to the left in this X and Y plane. Um, what you may not know is that the web page is actually more of a 3D plane and there's this third Z axis. So we can use a Z index to alter the Z value for elements which controls their vertical position um, on the web page. So by default, all elements will be statically positioned. So they have the position colon static property uh, and they will all be rendered in the same layer, uh, which is what you've seen and been doing this whole time. Uh, however, changing uh, an element's position value from default to, for example, absolute or sticky or relative will alter the layer in which the element is rendered. So to demo what this actually means, uh, we have the same red box from before and it doesn't have any position uh, attribute. So we know that its position is static, uh, the default value. And then we have this blue box here, which has position absolute and you can see it's position 300 pixels from the top and 50 pixels from the left. And what we can see is that it's actually appearing on top of the static red element. Um, and the reason for that is because we set position absolute, the blue box's Z index value defaults to zero, uh, which is actually above the static layer that the red box is being rendered on. So for a summary on what Z index is, uh, it's a CSS property which allows you to adjust the vertical layer that a positioned element is rendered on. Uh, and this point that it's a positioned element is very important. Uh, so it can't have the position static property. Uh, setting a higher Z index means that the element will appear uh, as though it's closer to the viewer of your web page. Uh, so on the top level and then setting a lower Z index value will send it backwards in your web page. So think of Z index kind of like this feature that they have on um, Microsoft Word or PowerPoint Canva, uh, where you can bring layers or images to the front or send them backwards. Um, so Z index used to be more popular back in the day uh, and it was used often in modals and pop-ups and dialogues, things that had to appear on top of content uh, so that the user could interact with them. Um, or, however, now it's generally not used as often. Uh, so you may be asking yourself, why are we watching this lecture? Um, the reason that I'm doing this lecture is because a lot of code bases actually still use Z index uh, and they have a lot of elements which have this property. Um, and most people don't actually realize that Z index only works on positioned elements. So IE, not the ones that have static uh, position. Uh, so I've seen devs chuck a Z, Z index randomly on elements that they want on the top and then wonder why it doesn't work. So the question to why, um, why are we learning this? Uh, it's very helpful to know the basics of Z index uh, and it, it is used um, pretty often. So you may encounter it in your front end work. Uh, so as I've said previously, generally now we don't use it as often and I would actually uh, argue for avoiding Z index as much as possible. Um, and the reason for this is because if you have a lot of elements with this property, you can often get stuck in this loop of increasing one element's Z index and then having to uh, increase the Z index of other elements that have the Z index property. Uh, so looking at this image on the right, we have, as I've mentioned, the static layer and then zero, one, and you can keep going two, three, four, etc. And then similarly, you can go into the negative numbers. So you can have a negative one, negative two, negative three, and these will all render under the static layer. Um, so as an example of why I would avoid Z index, 
let's say we have one element with z index one and maybe five elements with z index two. So they're above this layer. If I want to change that element, the first element to z index two, I now have to go and change those other five elements to z index three so that they render on top of the one I initially changed. So you can see there's this constant having to change everything because z index is relative to the elements, to the other elements on the page. So ideally what you would do is use z index on maybe one or two elements on your web page and then make use of the default rendering order provided by the browser in HTML um, to organize the other elements on your page. So we'll go through a real life example later in the lecture, but I thought I'd start off with a pretty simple uh, example just containing four divs. Uh, okay, so I have an example here. Uh, I have four boxes, one, two, three, and four, red, blue, orange, and purple. Uh, and you can see they're just divs um, with height 300, width 300, and just some padding so that the number isn't right along the edge. Uh, and I basically want to demo like a really simple Z index example. Um, let's suppose that we want box four uh, to be on top of box one. So we already kind of know how to do this with uh, position absolute. Um, absolute. Uh, oops, can't spell. And we set maybe top 50 pixels. So we've seen this already in the slides before uh, where we can move box four on top of box one. Um, and the reason that this is happening uh, is because remember red, blue, and orange, the, the three boxes here are statically positioned and the purple box is not statically positioned. Um, and hence it's on a layer above uh, the, the other three boxes. Now um, we can actually apply this to all everything except the red box and we can see that they kind of disappear, right? So we've applied position absolute to blue, to orange and to purple. Uh, and you can see only the purple one seems like it's rendering. Uh, and the reason for that is because of this order here. So blue, orange, and purple are all rendering on the same layer, which is the zeroth layer. Uh, and they're rendering in this order. So blue renders, then orange, and then purple. So because of that, and because they're all in the same position, purple is on top. Uh, so what we can actually do is maybe just demo this, left 50 pixels, uh, left 100 pixels, and left 150 pixels. So you can see all three boxes are there and they're all on the same layer, um, the zeroth layer, and they're just on top of that uh, red box, which is statically positioned. Um, so now, uh, here's where Z index comes in. Suppose we want the blue box to be on top of the orange and the purple box. Um, what we can do is apply Z index here. So right now they're on the zeroth layer. So if we set a Z index of one, which is greater than zero, it will appear on top. Similarly for the orange box, we can do the same. We can set Z index two, and it will be on top of the purple box, which is Z index zero, the blue box, which is Z index one, and also the red box, which is the static layer. And then again with purple, we can set Z index to three. Uh, and now we have a static layer, which is the one, Z index one, Z index two, and Z index three. And you can see they're rendering on top of each other uh, as expected. Um, if we apply Z index to the red box, nothing will happen. So we can set Z index four, which is greater than three, but it's not rendering on top of the uh, other three boxes because again, it's statically positioned. So we can only apply Z index if uh, the elements are positioned. So if they have absolute relative sticky, basically anything other than static. So I'll delete this line because it's not really doing anything. 
Um, another point to make is that we can make these numbers as large as we want. So we can set this to like 30,000 uh, and it's still greater than two and it's still greater than one. So it'll be at the top. Uh, if we set this one to like 30,001, now this one will be on top. So it's just looking at basically the, the numbering of the layers. So just think of each number as its own layer. Uh, and if it's a, a higher number, it'll be a higher layer. So like we can go up positive, up the positive numbers, we can go down the negative numbers. So what we can do is set all the z-indexes to negative 1. And what we'll see is now they are positioned underneath this static default layer, uh, which also can be really useful if you want to do some fun layering. I don't know, maybe a hack drop shadow. <laughs> um, I can't really think of any, like, too many use cases for this. But again, useful to know that you can go uh, negative and say we want the purple layer to be at the very bottom, we can set it to negative 10. Uh, and now it's uh, rendered underneath the red, the blue, the and the orange. So that's just a really simple example of Z index um, in action. And now we'll go into like a more complex uh, use case, um, something I've encountered uh, in my dev life. Okay, so here's my next real life example. Uh, it's basically a knockoff Google Calendar. Uh, so we have Thursday, 2nd of September, 2021. Uh, we have all these slots for hours. Uh, and then we have a couple of elements uh, on the page. We have this right arrow uh, line and uh, an event called work. So if we Look at the starting code uh, for the HTML. We just have a date holder, which is basically this box uh, at the top, which contains the words Thursday and 2nd of September 2021. So that's that. Uh, and I've applied a couple of styles to them just to the uh, font and their spacing inside the box. Uh, so font weight bold and just the size. Uh, and then we have a div class hour breakdown container, which is this whole section here, all these lines, um, just using um, a repeating linear gradient to achieve these lines. Uh, and then we have a now indicator, um, which wraps my right arrow and my now line. So we have the now line and we have the right arrow and the goal of this is to basically indicate the hour that I'm in. So I don't know if you guys know Google Calendar, but they have a red line that throughout the day just slowly goes down the screen, um, depending on which hour it is. So that's what we're trying to mimic. And we have this like little red triangle uh, for some extra complexity, I suppose. Uh, and then we have this final div at the bottom which is class work um, and it has inline styles, um, which isn't great, but uh, this is what you'll see in existing code bases as well, like a lot of random just mix of both styles. So we have that and it just has a background color and a height and a width. So what my goal is, is to basically move these three elements the triangle, the line, and the work box onto this div, which is titled our breakdown container. So I want these three elements to be on this page, and I want the now indicator to be maybe 25% down work. Um, so this obviously has to do with layers because we want the hour breakdown to be underneath work, and we want the now indicator to be on top of work. So what we can start with is actually just moving work on top of this uh, div. So if we add the position absolute value, we automatically move work onto the zeroth layer. And what we can do is just say maybe top 240 pixels. So that moves it 240 pixels from the top. So 
it's already above the statically positioned hour breakdown container uh, because of the examples I've given before. I explained it. Uh, so zero is above static. Now we have this arrow line here. Um, what we want to do first of all is maybe, let me zoom in a little, align it so that the line is actually coming out from the center of the triangle. Um, so what we want is the now line. We want to move it up maybe 10 pixels or so. So what we can do is we can also position absolute it and do something like bottom 10 pixels. Oh, that's not what I wanted. So what I did is I moved it 10 pixels from the bottom because I position absolute it. I meant relative. So I want it relative to its old position to move 10 pixels above that. So you can see now it's kind of there. Um, if we want to really be pedantic, we could do 10.5. <laughs> um, so now we've got a good triangle with a line coming out of it. So now we want this element, which is wrapped in the now indicator, to move above work. Uh, so what we can do is we can now indicator and we can say position absolute, right? Uh, and let's say we move it 280 pixels, right? And it disappears. And the reason for that is similar to the work. We've moved position absolute uh, and we moved work box 240 pixels from the top and we move the now indicator 280 pixels from the top, which means it's somewhere here, which is under the work container because the work container appears after the now indicator in our HTML. So what we can do is just set Z index to be one. And here we go, we can see it's now spawned <laughs> above the work uh, container. And that's kind of a, a real life use case for Z index. Um, generally, you draw lines or um, yeah, any kind of line or maybe some container on top of your existing uh, UI, uh, it will generally have this Z index property set. Um, and like I said, we usually want to avoid it. So for example, for work, I didn't set a Z index um, because if I had, if I had set a Z index to like five, I would have to set my now indicator to six. Um, which has this cascading effect that I was talking about earlier on. So we generally try and avoid setting Z index and just using um, the static layer and the zeroth layer. Um, but then in some cases such as this, where you have a line and it's just one element and it doesn't impact anything else, uh, then it's a good idea to use Z index to kind of just bring it up a layer um, and so that it renders on the top. And yeah, that's kind of all the content that I have for this lecture. Uh, I hope it was useful and you've learned something. So thanks.